um, this through the summer and fall into the next rainy season. Um, however, in discussions with, with Paul Kaler, the city manager there, he's noted that um, they have not eased any of their drought uh, restrictions. And really the real test for them will come on May 1 where they need to have a little, just almost 1,200 acre feet in storage in, in order to lift the, the ongoing drought emergency restrictions. O over on, on the coast, uh, last time I mentioned that the flows in the stream flows in the Noyo and the um, Navarro River were very low, extremely low, at least from the moment they have come up um, significantly as a result of the recent rains. Uh, in the case of the Noyo River, the flows are now well above the minimum uh, in-stream flows required for fish, which is good news for the city of, of Fort Bragg since they get the majority of their water directly from the Noyo River. However, again, the real test will come in, in May when after the rains have stopped and you're relying on what's called base flow. Um, right now, uh, the Noyo River is still, you look at cumulative runoff, and this is pretty typical for most of the rivers on the coast, still running at about 30% of, of normal where we would be in terms of the total volume of runoff. And finally, um, uh, Mike Kelly, the manager of the Mendoc Mendocino Community Services District reports that uh, the recent rains have helped. Um, they've received about six inches of rain in the last two weeks. But even with this rain, they're running about 40% of normal, and they are still very much in the midst of, of, of uh, emergency drought water use restrictions. And, and so, in, in summary, things are a little bit better, and I suppose we should be grateful for what we received to date. Uh, water managers tend to be pessimistic and a whiny bunch. Um, but the bottom line is, is that we're still very much in a drought and we need to continue to plan and act accordingly. And that's a nice segue to a couple of items I wanted to cover today uh, just to, to alert the board on, on where we're at. Um, next week, we'll be coming uh, to the board with um, a drought declaration. Um, when, we, when we met last time, things were looking particularly bleak, particularly for um, Redwood Valley. Uh, county water district, things are better now and there is no immediate I'll call it life in peril situation and this is significant because um, because we don't meet that criteria, we are not in a position where OES can declare a state of an emergency. Um, and, and so um, what you'll be seeing is not a, a declaration or a state of emergency. Um, what, what you will see next week, because the situation still is, is, is is, is serious and requires attention. What we staff will be bringing forward is a is a, a resolution uh, to conserve water, and the, and then the basic notion here is it's a resolution that will be urging Mendocino County residents to conserve water. Um, there will be direction to the to the water agency to um, undertake various water conservation, uh, promote water conservation in various ways. Also direction. Um, to the Mendocino County Water Agency, Agency to assist various water purveyors in Mendocino County with their ongoing water conservation efforts and also direction to the Mendocino County Water Agency to assist OES with the compilation of data necessary to declare a state of emergency should the drought continue. So uh, I just wanted to, to point out that, again, si the situation has improved somewhat. This is not going to be a declaration of a state of emergency. It will be a resolution um, ur urging water conservation. On, on another front, last time we talked about indoor audits of the county facilities at Low Gap Park. Uh, staff is putting the finishing touches on our indoor water audit report. And I'm happy to report that we do have some, um, some promising opportunities, some low-hanging fruit. Uh, for example, um, it appears based off of the work that's been done that uh, through retrofitting of water faucets and shower heads, primarily in the, in the jail facilities, uh, the county could save roughly 50,000 gallons per month. Um, this, this, this can be accomplished with this retrofit and basically the cost of the, of the water faucet aerators and the shower heads would be um, more than, 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 than returned in less than a year by the water savings themselves. So in other words, in, within six months, the additional water savings and the reduction in the water bill would pay for those improvements. So that certainly seems like a no-brainer. Uh, we also looked at, at uh, toilets and toilet retrofit 
uh, retrofitting. This is a little bit more expensive, but even there, we're looking at a potential um, a payback, full payback within four years um, based off the reduction of water usage and in turn the, the water costs uh, to the county. Now just to sum it up, uh, these various retrofits, we're looking at potentially saving up to about five acre feet per year. That translates to about $3,000 per year to, to the county. And five acre feet, that's enough water to, to um, basically meet the, the needs of, of about um, Let's see here, about 35 to 40 people over a course of a year or about 15 uh, households. So, so it's not a, a trivial amount of, of water and certainly we like the idea of some immediate cash savings to the county within the current fiscal year. The last thing that I just want to touch on is we, last time we talked about the, what we're calling the rural, the rural residential emergency water supply assistance program. And the idea here is that we, we want to do something for those folks that are in the outlying areas that are relying, they're rural residents, they're relying on wells. The problem is that for, for some, their well goes dry and then they cannot find somebody who is willing to sell them a, a potable water source to get them through those dry periods. Um, s staff met with, with staff from environmental health and the planning department. And I won't go into all the details here, but. Uh, su suffice to say that we have identified some promising candidates in terms of, of entities willing to sell, um, that could potentially sell potable water. Uh, and, and these are primarily actually schools and hotels because schools relying on groundwater and hotels are essentially small water systems. They meet certain criteria and certain water testing requirements. Uh, and. And particularly in the case of the schools, this might be, for some of them, a way to generate some additional revenue. So <laughs> we're, it, we're very pleased about that. What we're finding, though, and what may be, what appears to be a, a um, critical uh, point here is that there's a real shortage of qualified potable water haulers in the county. And so we're looking at what can you do to, to increase the number of, of potable water uh, haulers in order, you know, now we have a source, now we have to find a a way to get it delivered to these people. So um, we will report back at the next board meeting with more details on that, but I did want to uh, just let you know that we are proceeding on that. And along that line, one, uh, one final note, and then I'll wrap it up here. The Water Agency um, CEO's Office, County Council, Supervisors Brown and Pinches, and Redwood Valley County Water staff met with D DDR um, to discuss possible use of of a well on the Masonite property as an emer emergency water source. And while the discussions are still very preliminary, I just want to mention it to you today and let you know that um, we'll, we'll see how this develops. But we may be coming back to the board here in the next month or two, um, requesting the board take action on a possible agreement here. And right now it's still very preliminary, but just want to um, make note of it and so you can anticipate possibly seeing this coming in the next month or two. And I think with that, again, I know you have a very full schedule. I'll stop right here and be happy to answer any questions. Questions or comments from the board? Uh, Roland, uh, the Scout Lake project. We yes. Briefly. We are um, wrapping up um, a, a temporary access agreement with, with the uh, Boy Scouts there uh, and actually hope to have that signed next week. That will allow us access to do um, the, the technical work this, this spring out there and also provides us a window where uh, giving us an exclusive right to work with the Boy Scouts on, on the Scout Lake project and that water supply. So ho hopefully that will be signed next week. Thank you. Uh, could we get like a, in your report, like a 30-day update on that project? Yes. Okay. Because it's, I think it's crucial to our new water. I mean, we all, re it's nice to have the rains, but we're going to have to come up with some new water. Uh, any members of the public like to speak? Sure. State your name, Tony. Please. Tony Orth, uh, Brick Trails. Uh, I want to report that our new uh, dam facility in Brick Trails and the Oppenheimer gate system is working fantastic. We currently hold more water than we